Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to evening prayer. Well, my eyes were killing me today, and so I gave up trying to do a video. It's just they're still kind of bothering me now, but they're much better than what they were. And I figured stuff blowing in from the, with this front, so we'll chalk it up to allergies. Um, we're back in Hosea six again, and this is actually at the prompting of Ray. Um, back into those three verses we had talked about before because uh, he had put it up there again because I had mentioned it in that one video and I went back in there and looked at it again and uh, I even told him I was like I, I see some things there <clears throat> it'd be interesting to talk about them and I plan on doing it earlier today but I had no scripture tonight so we'll talk about it here and what it's going to do is funny because it's going to lead us into uh, 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 understanding which we have the understanding verse but there's something in the understanding verse we can look up and it proves exactly what we're talking about and what the word is telling us and what the Lord is attempting to establish in us. <clears throat> so again, Hosea six, first three um, verses and little hidden things in the wording really stand out. That's understanding. It's understanding what it's saying and how it applies. The verse one says, come and let us return to the Lord. Return to the Lord. What is he talking about there? Let us return to the Lord. For he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. Now that verse opens up for the next two verses. And when you read verse four, it seems like these first three verses stand alone all by themselves. They don't apply to what's being said in the rest of the chapter. So I wonder if this is one of those hidden messages that's directed to a particular group of people in the future. The Bible is full of them. Now verse 2 says, After two days he will revive us. On the third day he will raise us up, that we may live in his sight. This is a rapture verse. So, after two days, he will revive us. And you remember the scripture that says, and this is the stuff that's scattered throughout the Bible, the scripture that says, with the Lord, a day is as a thousand years, a thousand years is as a day. Well, that seems to apply to this. So after 2,000 years, he will revive us. Well, what's the church been doing for 2,000 years? Just moving along, doing their thing, getting it wrong most of the time. <laughs> but what's happened What's happened the last five years? See, I've talked to people who have been watching since the 70s, since the 80s, but I've talked to more people who have been wakened up since 2017. The last five years has been in a massive awakening, a revival, so to speak. So he's reviving us. After two days, he will revive us. So when I read that, it's like, hmm, that sounds like that's what that's talking about. Then he says, on the third day, he will raise us up. What does that mean? I'm going to put something out. I'm not saying this is accurate because I don't know, but I'm just doing rough calculations in my head. So after two days, he will revive us. Well, when is that two days? Is it, does it start at Christ's birth? If that's the case, we're in the third day now. Does it start at Christ's death? And resurrection. In that case, that'll be between 2030 and 2033. The end of the two days, the beginning of the third day. That's if that, now that's all if, a whole bunch of ifs. Was it at the, when the second temple was destroyed in 70 AD, when then we have even longer. Now, let me reiterate the point. Psalm 9010 has a large part to play in this as a prophetic statement. At a certain point, that prophecy will, will cease to be able to be fulfilled. And in fact, there's about, I think, 11 or 12 prophecies that will cease to be able to be fulfilled after the next couple of years. After about 2023, there's a bunch of prophecies that can't be fulfilled. Now, the Lord can do what he wants, but he did say all prophecy must be fulfilled. There's some of them we're looking at, and it's like the timeline fits way too close. And especially now that this recent revelation that's come out since 70 AD, we're in a 39, the 39th um, Jubilee from 70 AD when the temple was destroyed. Hopefully you guys got to go to the community tab and watch Ty Green's video. I've shared a couple of John Barnett's videos too. They're really good. 
Um, we know the number 40 is very important. What would be the 40th Jubilee? Could be the millennial reign. Who knows? I don't know. I, I can't lay anything in, in concrete on this. What I can do is I can point what I'm seeing here and what it's reminding me of elsewhere in the Bible. So that verse 2 there has a lot of implications. After two days, he will revive us. Well, technically, since that time frame, it's been 2,000 years. Now, the key word there is after. After two days. Well, if that's the case, since most of us have started getting our eyes opened in the last five years, some people go back a little further. Some people have been watching since 2005 and started seeing these things. But the year 2000 is 2,000 years after Christ's birth, two days. So after two days, he will revive us. We're in that revival time. On the third day, he will raise us up. We're in that third time. Now, again, like I said, it's just rough math. But this is very interesting, and this stands out to me. It's more confirmation of what we're already been watching. And I like getting the confirmations because I always have this nagging feeling in the back of my mind that we're missing something somewhere. And I'm hoping the Lord's going to point that out to us if we are. But this is really good because what we see here is just more confirmation that the time frame we're in is the key time frame right now. You know, a lot, if you're taking Bible prophecy for what it says and the timelines that it seems to be indicating, a lot needs to happen in the next year and a half, a whole lot. So how interesting of the time frame that we're in. And you go by the Hebrew calendar and look at, you know, we're in years 5781 right now. There's a lot of stuff tied to 5781. There's a lot of math that goes on with it, and it'll take several hours to cover it, do a video covering all of it. But um, it's very interesting. Now verse 3. We haven't even gotten into the third verse yet. Let us know. What he's saying is not, you know, he's not saying, hey, you let us know. He's saying, let us know. Let us Know this. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. Let us know the knowledge of the Lord. That's a very, very um, important statement. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. We're doing that by what we're doing in the Bible here. We're studying these things. Uh, Ray made a statement earlier. He said, I learned a lot from this channel. I learned a lot from you guys. Because I didn't know about, I didn't, hadn't seen this yet or been led to it until Ray say some, said something about it. So we're all learning together. But listen to what this verse 3 says. His going forth, which means his travel, what he's going to do, is established as the morning, which means it's going to come up. Here's more hints. As the morning, I see a lot of stuff hinting at early morning over and over and over again. His going forth is established as the morning, which means it's, it's without like clockwork, it's going to happen. It will happen exactly how the Bible says it will. He will come to us like the rain. Well, how does rain come? On clouds. And it comes in gently. And then you have rain. Um, like the latter and former rain to the earth. If you get the latter and the former rain together, and we, there's other scriptures that talk about this. We, we can't get it to this in this prayer video. There's other scriptures that talk about the former and the latter rain. Like the latter and former rain to the earth, when you get latter and former rain, it's a deluge. Which means he's coming quickly. It, it's all To me, it's all talking about rapture. It's all talking about the establishment of, of the bride and, and getting her um, brought forth and presented. Um, so I love this because you read this and it's like, look at all this stuff hidden in here. Most people read past this and just shoot straight on past, but evidently there's more here. The Lord wants us to see. That's interesting. And it would be definitely be worth trying to get another video and dig a little deeper into the latter rain being revived. Um, the knowledge of the Lord, uh, his going forth being established. This is interesting. 
these three verses have a lot more in them than what we can we can see on the outside. When we take another look and link it to other scriptures, it starts to tell us a more story. Again, it's more stuff that the Lord is opening up to us and presenting to us. This is understanding. This is understanding coming to us from his word. Let us keep pursuing this understanding, this knowledge of the Lord. Knowing The knowledge of the Lord is knowing what this word says, first of all. Let us continue to pursue this and see what else we can find. This is why we have to read the word every day. This is why we have to take every opportunity we can to flip through a few things. At least a verse a day and meditate on that verse. But even better is the context of that verse. Because then it really leads to a very rich understanding. I don't know about you guys, but I love this. I love how this is coming together this way and what he's showing us. And sometimes I don't always know where something's going to lead, but it always leads somewhere good. Um, let's get into some prayer because I want to give thanks about this stuff. This is cool. Lord, we come before you this evening, this beautiful evening. Thank you for the sunset. It was amazing. And the cool weather, this front coming in, amazing. I love it. Thank you for your protection, your guidance. We glorify you and honor you because of you, of you and because of you, the amazing things that you're doing, the things that you're showing us. How we visited Hosea 6, 1, 2, and 3, and you brought us back to it again because there's more there that we didn't catch the first time. I think we'll probably be back here again a third time. This is amazing, Lord. Amazing. When you The way you open your word up the way it is. I'm very interested to see where more of these little links are going to lead to. And what it's going to show us. And especially the story that's hidden within the Psalms we've been praying. Lord, you're, you're going out of your way to show us these things. Just like verse 2 says, after two days you will revive us. And, and Christianity as a whole has been gone through such change. And has, has been asleep for so long. Over a thousand years. And now all of a sudden an awakening, but it's not in everyone. The parable of the four soils, and I just shared a video from John Barnett on the community tab that talks about this, great insights into that. We talked about that. We have all four of those soils today in Christianity and the church. We have a lot of people who are losing their way or never even found their way to begin with, but yet they're still playing church. Uh, it, a lot of it is people who are attacking. And what I'm seeing, and we have someone else who has come out of this. Um, Mosh Pit and Kitten has come out. Um, I think her new channel name is uh, I Am Who You Say I Am. Well, we have another person, Truth Sets Free. And he's been commenting, and his uh, his main account had gotten banned on here. And I think through, through extrapolation, reading his comments, I think it was because it was uh, he was attacking us about the rapture. And I wasn't interested in having that debate anymore, and I blocked him. Well, he has since changed his mind. He says, I've learned from you guys, and I'm sharing it with other people. I've been helping them. Amen. So we have someone else who has seen the light. You, you are waking up the Christians. You're waking up the brethren. You're answering our prayers for this. Lord, thank you. This ministry is succeeding. Now, I know of one person that has come to you, at least one that has come to you as salvation because of either prayers on this channel or because of, of what we're sharing on this channel through someone else. And we've given thanks for that, and that was an amazing praise report. But we've had several, one, two, three, four, five at least that I can remember off the top of my head. Actually, six, seven, eight, actually nine, maybe ten that I can remember off the top of my head that have come back and commented saying, I misjudged you. Uh, I now see exactly what you're talking about. I was wrong for attacking you guys. I see what is actually saying now. I'm, I've come out of this. So many people have done this. You have opened their eyes to see the truth. You are answering our prayers on that. And you are bringing brethren to a repentance and to a better understanding. And the, I can see in their comments the peace that is reigning in their lives now. It's It's awesome. It, I can't express in words, Lord, how I feel about this. Because one of the things that I was worried about was that this ministry wouldn't bear any fruit. 
yet consistently. Even when it, it, things were rough, the several times they've been rough. Even when I was setting fire to everything. This ministry has consistently bared fruit, and it's all because of you. I give thanks to you tonight for that. And let that be a standing thanksgiving for this ministry doing something good and positive. And look where we're at now. You, you got us into morning prayer. Then you got us into evening prayer. Then you got us into the parables. Then you got us into doing key books of the Bible. Now you've got us, you're, we're, we're finding all these little interesting little nuggets popping out of the word. Other brethren are going back and watching old videos on my playlist and they're telling me I, I'm getting these new nuggets out of your word, out of what you're sharing here. And Lord, it has nothing to do with me. I'm just a face and a voice. It has everything to do with you. It's what you're doing here. I love your style because you sneak in. It's like a drag racer. God brings in an old 49 coupe that's just rust bucket looking horrible. But it's got big tires and a loud exhaust. He goes out on the racetrack and he blows everybody's doors off. He snuck in with something that looked like it was going to fall apart. And it turned out it had the greatest amount of horsepower. And beat everybody. And nobody saw it coming. And you're doing that. You're coming in sneaky. And sliding the truth in. And all of a sudden people are like, whoa, wait a second. I didn't see that before. And it's you're even doing it with me. Sometimes in the video I'm filming, you're bringing these things to light. I love it. I absolutely love it. Because what's happening here is that we're gaining an understanding. Understanding of what your word means, understanding of how it how it applies, understanding of the better way to deal with other other people to help them understand. And it's because of what you're doing with us and teaching that we're able to be more productive in our individual ministries. And every one of us has a ministry of some kind. Every one of us. And I'm still in awe of what you're doing. And for most people, for most of the world, maybe even for most Christians, it's generic to them. They don't see what's happening. And I think you're doing that on purpose. Because those with eyes to see will see it. Those whose desire is to see you will see it. Those whose pursuit, verse 3 of Hosea 6, the pursuit is your knowledge, will find it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you a thousand times. Because you are validating us. And I have to admit, it, it's a, it, I'm, I've been seeking some form of validation and you've given it in, in droves. You're validating us. You're validating what we're seeing. You're validating. I was talking to my wife earlier when we were talking about the word and how so many people are getting so many different understandings. And I told her, it's because people aren't reading the Bible for themselves. They, they, and they, and I, every time I call them out on it, that they say something to the effect of, I am reading. And I tell them, you may be reading the verses somebody told you to read, but that's not reading the Bible. You need to go to that verse they show you, but read it more. Five verses up, five verses down. Look at the context. Think about what is Jesus trying to tell me here? Instead of letting someone else tell you what the Bible means. And most of these attacks are coming from people that are doing just that. They're going out there and they're listening to what somebody else says. Hey, this is what this means. And they never once investigate it. And that's where this hatred and this anger and this vitriol comes from. And this mocking and scoffing from Christians comes from. There is no way, and Lord, only you could convince me of this if it's true. There is no way two Christians from completely different walks of life could read the same exact verse, verses and get two polar opposite understandings. There's no way. Your word doesn't have that kind of understanding to it. The understandings have to be close because that's the nature of the scripture. How could people, because I know your word doesn't mean those two different, completely opposite understandings. 
Uh, some of them aren't super serious, but depending on how much emotion people put into them, it can become a false doctrine, and they'll worship that doctrine. That's what's been happening with the pre-trib rapture and the post-trib rapture. How can your word mean the same scriptures mean two completely different things? It can't. It means one thing. And what I've seen and what you've shown me is that those of us who want your knowledge, verse 3 of Hosea 6, that we are pursuing your knowledge, get your understanding from this. Not perfectly, because we're flesh, because we're human, but as close to it as we can. And all of us, are, 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 what we're seeing in it aligns. Whereas the people who are letting other people tell them how to do the Bible, and they're, they don't, they're not looking for your knowledge, get a completely different view. More validation, more confirmation of what we already know. Thank you, Lord. Again, thank you. You are worthy of our praise and our worship. You are worthy of all honor and glory. We lift your name up because it is only because of you that we are able to do what we are able to do. It is only because of you that this, this little random YouTube channel is showing things that there's some stuff I've talked about in here that no one's ever talked about. I can't remember a time, I can't even hardly find anybody online that has discussed these things and it's because you've shown them to us. That's awesome. That is amazing. And Lord, I hope you never stop until the day we're taken or the day we pass on that you keep showing us these things so we can keep showing the people your knowledge and your truth and help people understand from a much simpler, much more specific application of your word to each of us individually, not as the group. When I was in the army... Uh, the NCOs would punish the whole platoon for one guy making a mistake. And I had one uh, platoon sergeant walk up to me one time, and we're all getting, they call it being smoked. It's remedial PT. We're all in trouble. And he's like, uh, they asked me, he said, do you know why you guys are getting in, in trouble? No idea. He said, what? I said, I have no idea, sergeant. No idea. I don't even know what this is or what's going on because I wasn't here all day. Half of these people, we were all down at the MWR because we were doing classes we were told to go do. We just walked in on this. Turned out it was something that somebody had done four units, no, three units over on the other side of the hangar. It didn't even have anything to do with us, but we were getting in trouble for it. So I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that because of somebody else is having a problem, that person gets dealt with individually, not the group. Your word is the same way. It applies to each of us individually, not as a group, not as a group thing. But what's amazing about it is, is that when we all read it individually and apply it individually, we all come together as a group with almost identical understandings of it. That shows we're on the right track. That shows we're on the right page because I'm not telling people what the Bible means. I'm just showing them what it says. And we're all discovering the meaning as we go. It's, I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's understanding. And it's one of the key elements, understanding, of being a Christian and how this stuff works. And having a really good, having a really good uh, a handle on your word. Because then we're able to apply it. The apostles, they had great understanding. So they were able to apply the word in every way. In every situation and that's what we need and that leads us to understanding that takes us to our understanding verse tonight and we actually have a little thing to go on after this proverbs 4 7 the beginning beginning of wisdom is this get wisdom and whatever you get get insight and we're going to expand on this after the prayer lord but this is cool and this is awesome and it's funny because i've never i don't ever remember reading this before the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom, and whatever you get, get insight. Insight into what? Insight into the wisdom that you get. Ah, you already know, Lord, I don't even have to say it. I love your word, and I love what you're doing in this ministry, and I love your, what you're doing in the brothers and sisters. You're changing hearts, you're changing minds, you're opening eyes, and you're revealing truths that 
for all intents and purposes, have never been revealed before. Now, I say that, but, you know, over the last 2,000 years, lots of these things have been revealed, but most of it had been kept undercover because the church as a whole has suppressed the full council, which is a travesty. And right now, I lift up a prayer against that. That, 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 that you, the full council is being hindered and held back and suppressed by supposed Christians all over the world. Lord, I pray that you put a stop to that. Blow your word open to everyone so that they have no choice. They either need to receive it, receive conviction and accept it and acknowledge it. Or they need to stop what they're doing. Stop preaching false understandings and go sit down somewhere. Because they're leading people astray. And it's, it's terrifying how bad it is. After doing all that, <clears throat> I have one prayer request to lift up, Lord. <laughs> but Lord, you know how passionate I am about your word and about the truth that we've been denied for so long. I was so angry when I found out just what I've been denied. And it's like, why has nobody ever talked about this? I, I can't even remember listening to someone who talks about this. And all these things you've been showing me, and it's like, why has nobody ever talked about this? These are things we should be talking about because people need to be warned. More people would get saved if they did that. I want to lift up Sister Jennifer tonight. She is looking for wisdom. She is looking for patience. She is looking for two awesome days away from her pain and her suffering and the tribulation that she is going through. Lord, I don't pray that just for her. I pray that for all of us. Wisdom patience, and relief from our pain. Physical, mental, emotional. From the tribulation that the word, poured, the, word the Lord, or the word, the world, ah, I can't talk, that the world pours out upon us nonstop every day. To have a couple of awesome days with you, not just by ourselves, with you. Days of discovery, days of revelation, and days of peace. And I, and I always pray that peace for everybody, for all hearts, that that peace that defies all understanding. You have poured that in me like no other, and it just it's, it feels so good to not worry about tomorrow. So many people are worried about tomorrow, next week, next year. I don't worry about it anymore. You have blessed me so richly, and to that I give many thanks. Lord, thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your knowledge and your understanding and your wisdom. And thank you for the amazing work you're doing in this ministry and so many others that are being ignored out there. I would very much love to come together with many other ministries and us to join in fellowship and pray for each other. With no bias, with no nonsense, Pray for each other and, and be a blessing like we're supposed to be. I fear that there's not enough time for that to happen, but you are God and you can do whatever you want. And I trust you for that. Thank you, Lord. We love you and we are watching for you. I pray when you come, every one of us is found worthy to escape what's coming so that we won't have to be here for these things. I pray that our hearts and our minds are prepared. I pray our lamps are full of oil, that we are ready to go, and that we are always watching and have the strength to keep watching. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for evening prayer. I, I say again, the, the dry times, and sometimes it does feel like it, but then we have a prayer, like the last couple of prayers have really been, I could feel it. Um, you guys know, I say it all the time, I'm just, I'm awestruck at, at what's happening. And to some people, it'll seem like it's a little thing, but when you really stop and think about that, and think about, I'm not just reading this word. He's got his finger on my phone right here, where you guys are looking at the screen, and he's showing me, look at this, look what this says. And he's got his hand on my shoulder. He's saying, look at what this means. Remember this verse? Remember that verse? The Lord himself is doing that to us. When you look at it from that point of view, it really makes this all the more important. And it makes you sit up and pay more attention. Lord, what are you showing me here? Oh, oh, wow. Okay, that's interesting. 
And then you go on that path of discovery to find these things. And when you discover new things, it is an amazing feeling. And then when you go online and look up to see if anybody else is talking about it, and you realize either very few or nobody has talked about it, or if the people have been, they never came to a conclusion, you're looking at a conclusion and it matches the word, and you're like, wait a second, why did you give this to me? Why did you give this to one of them? They have an audience. They can reach more people. And then you uh, suddenly have this understanding inside you that says, because I chose you, I choose the foolish things of this world. I choose the things people ignore. I choose the unhewn stone, not them. They pervert my word. They try to make a living off of something they shouldn't be making a living off of. They try to do more than what I told them to do with the word. Leading more on the money than on the word. You don't, you're not driven by that. So I'm using you and the people that will be reached are the ones I want to reach. He's got this under control. We don't have to worry about it. But when you start to understand it from that point of view, that changes everything. Now, with that being said, since we're still on the subject of understanding, let's read this again. Proverbs 4, 7. I want to show you something here. The beginning of wisdom is this. And what does he tell you? Get wisdom. And whatever you get, get insight. So whatever amount you get or whatever kind of wisdom you get, get insight. Insight into what? Insight into that wisdom. Now, what we do is we go look at what the definition of insight is. And it says the capacity to gain an accurate and deep intuitive understanding of a person or thing. So it's you get wisdom, but you get understanding of what to do with it, how to apply it how it applies to you. Down a little further, the next definition says, a deep understanding of a person or thing. Remember verse 3 of Hosea? Or, yeah, verse 3. Pursue the knowledge of the Lord. That can mean the knowledge the Lord has, or that can also be referring to knowing the Lord. A deep understanding of a person or thing. From psychiatry, the definition says, new understanding by a mentally ill person of the causes of their disorder. Being unsaved is a mental, being mentally ill because it's a spiritual change, not a physical one. It's internal. New understanding, repentance, change of mind. How awesome is that? That the very definitions contained with the word insight apply to so many other scriptures that are in there. And when I saw that, I was like, okay. That's cool. That is very cool. Let's look at Merriam-Webster real quick. This is another little nugget for you guys. Definition of insight. The power or act of seeing into a situation. Penetrating the issue. To the act or result of apprehending the inner nature of things or of seeing intuitively. Apprehending means you grasp the concept. That's what the apostles did with the, um, with the uh, parables. They could grasp what it was talking about. Many of the disciples did. Anything else? There's synonyms for insight. <laughs> Discernment. <laughs> Perception. I love it. I absolutely love it because the more we look at it, the more it proves everything we're talking about here. We're on the right track, you guys. And something like this definitely proves it. Let's keep going the way we're going and let's let the Lord lead on this because evidently we're doing something right because of what he's doing with us here. I love it. I love it. I love it. You guys already know. And all we can do, as long as we hang on to what we have, hang on to our crown so nobody takes it, all we can do is get better and grow and hopefully lead some other people like, like we've done. We've got brothers and sisters coming to the channel. Hey, I've changed. I've been listening and I, I get it. The Lord's opened my eyes. Amen. I love you guys that have done that. That's awesome. And we love to fellowship around here and just communicate and pray for each other. Just like the Lord told us to. We are disciples because we do what he told us to do. And it's such an awesome thing to be a part of this. 
and to, to do what we're doing. Again, I, I am awestruck at this. It's it, to be to be doing this, being the person that I am and being where I am is awesome. Love you guys very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I pray he blesses you richly and overflowing. And I pray you have, guys have a wonderful night of rest. And I pray tomorrow is a brand new day of peace, insight, understanding, wisdom, and new revelation for each and every one of you. I'll see you guys in the next video.